A lot of people often ask, how do I effectively onboard and be successful in big tech? What behaviors should I take up to ensure that I do well? What are some of the skills that I need to develop in order to go far in the big tech world? I've put together a short list of three essential skills that no matter the company you land at, you'll need for success in your career as a SWE. These hold especially true for big tech as it's a really different game. The things you need to focus on and how you need to act are quite different from smaller companies. Of course, this isn't an exhaustive list, but a good starting point for continued discussions. Before we get into the list, just a kind reminder to subscribe to the channel and like the video. It really helps the channel grow and reach more people. Okay, let's get started. As a SWE, your main job is to solve problems, plain and simple, but unfortunately not all problems are straightforward. Not all problems have an easy stack overflow that you can reference, ChatGPT won't generate the code for you, you're going to have to get stuck in and solve it from first principles. If you're lucky, you need to apply some brain power and then you'll just be able to get through the task and ship that feature. Great. But as you grow in seniority, the problems you need to solve will only grow in complexity and scope. Sometimes the problems aren't even technical, or they are technical but in an area which you're not familiar with. We call this state being blocked. Everyone has been there, stuck and unable to proceed. One of the most crucial skills a software engineer can have is the ability to unblock yourself, to find that needle of information in the haystack of noise. This is especially compounded at large companies where there's just so much internal information and code to churn through before you can find that one piece that you're looking for. Early in our careers, when we're stuck, we can usually rely on our tech lead or even our manager to get us unblocked. Our problems are small in scope and usually something that someone can help us with right off the top of their head. But as the scope grows, the number of people who can actually help you decreases. Plus, in the edge age of layoffs, everybody is looking to solve their own problems and no one is trying to take the time out of their day to solve your problems. That's why they're called your problems. Nobody is coming to save you when you're a senior. So what to do? Well, you need to fall back on a solid ability to unblock yourself. Now, there's four high level ways in which this happens. The first and most important is the ability to code search. Every big company will have a solid mechanism for grepping the code base. Chances are you aren't special. Your problem isn't new. What you're stuck on is not a cutting edge problem. Someone else over the years will likely have faced the same challenge. And the answer that you're looking for is in the code somewhere. You just have to find it. Build that muscle of being good at code search. Learn how to grep the code base with the tools available to you. Learn what things to look for. How to build that intuition of what variable names might be called. How to format your searches so that they return the results that might help you. It's hard to describe exactly how to get good at this. It's one of those things you just pick up over years of doing it. You build that intuition and sense that you just can't get any other way but by struggling to find the information. Learn to code search properly and you'll definitely decrease the amount of time that you spend blocked. Number two, at every large company, there is some sort of mechanism where engineers can communicate amongst themselves in a public manner. At Meta, we have something called Workplace, which is essentially Facebook, but for work. Here, there's groups with posts and an absolute lake of information. Being able to sift through all of this effectively is just as important as code search. Like with code, a lot of your problems will have already been solved before or at least attempted. Being able to sift through this information and find what you need is invaluable. A lot of the time, it won't be an exact answer. It will be a small hint or a nudge in the right direction, a comment in the documentation that sets you off on the path to finding the answer. Being able to take the discussions of others and apply it to your specific problem takes some practice, but once you get a sense of how to do this, it can speed up the time it takes to arrive at a solution to your problems. But don't rely too heavily on this. Let's be honest, the last thing any software engineer wants to do is write documentation. So expecting that the official docs will be up to date and complete is a stretch. You don't really actually need all of the answers, just enough to move you forward towards your goal. And usually grepping these sort of internal wikis and posts is just enough for that. In the age of AI, this can actually be also a great way to unblock yourself, but it does have a lot of detriments that if not properly managed can put you even further away from your objective. AI is great for getting those little rocks out of your shoe. Ah, how do I write this function in JavaScript? What's the API for fetching this bit of data? How do I write a create table statement in MySQL? Whatever it is. For small, well-defined tasks, AI is great and can usually spit out the answer you're looking for. In VS Code, the AI agent your company has will usually be able to speed you up by predicting what you want to do, 
provided it's relatively straightforward and you use well-named variables to give it context into what it should be doing. But do be careful here. AI can and does often hallucinate. It can send you on wild goose chases by bringing up deprecated ways of doing things or methods that are just plain wrong. Unfortunately, without the built-up muscle memory to assess what is wrong and what is right, it can often be hard to know the difference, but it will come with time. Definitely use AI to help you over the bumps in the road, but for larger rocks, you're likely not to get much out of it. The last and final resort for unblocking yourself is typically to ask someone. This is the slowest option as you'll need to provide them the relevant context, wait for them to respond, and have a bit of a back and forth. It's a slow iteration cycle and not really that optimal for unblocking yourself, but as I said, sometimes it's the last resort. Knowing when to reach out is a fine balance. You want to give it enough of a go on your own to say that you've safely done your due diligence, but you also don't want to spend too much time banging your head against the wall without any sort of reward. It's hard to put a number on how long you should spend blocked on something before reaching out. As a general rule of thumb, the more junior you are, the shorter time period this should be. Think half an hour or an hour before reaching out to a senior engineer on your team or your tech lead. The lower level you are, the easier it is to actually unblock your technical queries. But as mentioned before, the problems that senior plus engineers are working on are typically large in scale and complexity. So it takes a lot more of a local effort before trying to actually reach out. And when you do, what's the best way? Likely your manager or your tech lead won't be able to help you. How do you actually find those experts who can get you the answer to the problem that you're looking for? Typically, the best way is to post in an internal group and get the opinions of sub subject matter experts to help you. You'll broaden the net in terms of people who see your question and can respond. In addition, there's now a public record of the discussion and this is searchable and readable for future engineers. Hopefully, any one of these four points would get you unblocked. There is definitely a skill in knowing when something is a dead end and when to change the requirements or to pivot entirely to something else, but that's a topic for another day. The second pillar of success as a SWE has nothing to do with writing code. The skill of interest here is communication. Being able to get your thoughts across to an audience is essential. At a high level, there's two pillars here that underpin being a good communicator, verbal and written. With verbal communication, you don't need to be some slick silver tongue devil, just enough to get by, enough to get your points across clearly and concisely, communicate requirements and blockers to partners, provide updates and have a back and forth with coworkers to solve problems. But the majority of your conversations will not actually happen face to face, they will be written, either via chat messages, discussion posts, design docs, you name it. Having technical writing skills is a massive plus. Being able to tell a story with your words and have people simultaneously be engaged and informed is a fine skill to develop. It takes a lot of practice and time to get right. You should study how the experienced engineers who have mastered this skill do it, how they craft a post, how they structure their design docs, how is the information presented, what points are discussed. Usually this follows some sort of a structure like a high level TLDR to get a quick understanding of what the post or document is about, then a summary of the problem being solved, maybe a brief list of existing solutions or approaches, why they don't work exactly as well as they should, the proposed new solution and its technical details, any purported benefits of adopting this approach, how success metrics will be tracked, and any applicable counter metrics to make sure we don't introduce a regression, any roadblocks or potential blockers with the approach, and a call to action for feedback, comments, etc. on the idea. You'll notice this structure a lot among great written communicators. They provide the reader with the relevant information without bombarding them with all the particulars. Technical communication is all about getting your point across in the most clear and concise manner. No need for the extra fluff, no need for complex sentence structure or fancy words plucked from a thesaurus. This isn't AP English, it's the workplace. Keep it straightforward and streamlined. It takes time to build this muscle, especially if you're not a native English speaker. But with time, practice, and learning from those who have mastered the skill, you too can master the art of communication. The last item on the list revolves around the mentality that you need to be in when approaching a new project. Unfortunately, it's a reality that in big tech, everyone's ultimate goal is to have as much quote-unquote impact on their performance reviews, packing in as much as you can so you can be safe from layoffs and maybe get a nice bonus. But when it comes to impact, you need to be able to quantify it. And here's where metrics come in. Always have in the back of your mind the question of how am I going to measure the impact of my work? 
What goals am I setting and what numbers can I attribute to this work? How can I prove that when the year is done, what my contribution was? It's basically impossible to stroll into performance reviews without some sort of concrete numbers behind you and expect to do well. Sure, you can vibe code, but you can't vibe your way through performance evaluations. You might just be able to scrape by with a meets all if your work is visible enough and you don't have the numbers to back it, but if you want the higher ratings, you need to demonstrate some significant movements in core team or org level metrics. A lot of the time, these metrics will not be defined already. You need to define the logging, set up monitoring or tracking mechanisms to make sure you're actually tracking and capturing the effects of your work. With all of this telemetry in place, you can then quantify the impact of what you've done and take this with you into performance reviews. Always be asking yourself, what's my measure of success here? How am I going to measure what I do? A lot of the times, just having a ship goal is fine and reasonable, but if you wanna to go to the next level, then the work you do needs to tie into something. And the bigger and more important metric you manage to move or influence, the bigger the payoff. Personally, I hate this aspect of meta. I really hate that everyone is trying to measure things that in the grand scheme of things are just pointless. I hate that we have to pretend that some number on a chart means anything. But the reality is that this is just the game that we play. If I could snap my fingers and make it go away, then I would, but I can't. So get to tracking your metrics because this aspect of fang culture won't go away anytime soon. And that's the list, short and sweet, but hopefully packed with information. Which of these skills resonates with you the most? What skills do you think should be on this list? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching until the end, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.